The field of environmental health and safety, or EHS, is ever growing these days, and with hundreds of thousands of current open positions across the job market in the United States alone, I wanted to take an in depth look at how the market is currently taking shape. This is the Safety Wire Podcast. So my guest today is one of the senior recruiters for GRN Hudson, specializing in safety and environmental health and safety related positions. Um, Dan Robinette, it is a pleasure to have you on. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing currently, the company you work for. How'd you get into EHS recruiting? All right. Well, first off, pleasure to be here. Um, so recruiting in general, I kind of tripped into it, to be honest. Uh, I was a teacher, um, wasn't right for me, uh, came into recruiting and um, what I learned in recruiting is a lot, uh, there's an episode of the of Friends where Joey is talking about being an actor and he said, if a producer asks you if you can do something, you say yes. Can you ride a horse? Yes. Can you speak French? Yes. And you figure <laughs> it out. Um, so I got into recruiting, uh, actually recruit uh, primarily in the building products industry. And um, I started out recruiting in sales, actually. And one of my really good customers gave me a call one day. Uh, and he says, um, I was a different manager, never worked with him before. And he says, hey, I need an EHS manager. Can you help? And I said, of course, we're really good at that. I'm busy right now. Can we talk tomorrow? Hang the phone up, turn around to my boss and said, what's EHS? Uh, so <laughs> I learned a lot uh, on the fly. That was five years ago. Um, and, you know, for me, I really focus on um, learning my craft, what sets somebody apart, what makes a great sales rep a great sa sales rep, what makes a great EHS person a great EHS person. So it was like drinking from a fire hose, uh, talked to um, a fair number of chumps that I thought were great, uh, figured out later. Uh, now I'm to the point where um, I can really discern a truly great EHS person uh, from the from the person that uh, maybe isn't quite as invested as we would hope. And, um, you know, I do recruit other functions as well, but I am the office expert of EHS managers. I know you and I have over the years had many conversations on, you know, skill sets and things like that and, you know, how to build up a great EHS manager. I mean, being in the field, you bringing people into the field. I think we've had some great conversations on that. What are you as a recruiter? What kind of skill sets, credentials are you are you seeing that not only are companies requiring, but what are they really wanting in an EHS manager or anybody in this field? Well, I'd say across the board, um, employees in general, in every job, uh, they want more money for easier jobs. That's everybody. Um, within EHS, what I have found is um, companies want uh, people who are truly focused on safety and typically um, increasing safety within a manufacturing environment. And that involves being on the floor, um, walking around, uh, identifying potential risks, and really focusing on that behavioral-based safety. What I have found, there's a lot of EHS folks um, that want to get out of the plant. Uh, they want to make sure that they're on their computer, uh, filling out paperwork, saying, look, I'm compliant, but I'm not in the plant. Um, I was working on a role uh, for a plant EHS manager focused on keeping people safe. And the first question the person said was, uh, can this be done remotely? I was like, I don't know. I guess you could call the plant and say, hey, Ted, you got your eye protection on? You do? Good. Get Billy on the phone. I don't know. And I'm sure there are definitely regional roles where it's more compliance. But what I'm seeing, um, the industry needs more hands-on people, um, or even if you are that higher level that you're located in the plant on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you're going to see things that the operators are never going to see. You're going to see things that the plant manager is never going to see. And it takes that expertise to, to identify a potential risk and say, hey, this hasn't happened yet, but it's a matter of time. Someone's going to trip. Someone's going to fall. Someone's sleeve is going to get stuck. Uh, someone's going to get hurt or die if we don't do something now. And so that's what's lacking um, are those pe people that are really creative and can identify those risks before something happens, not just react. Um, hey, sorry, somebody died. We need to now do something about it. Like, 
hey, did anybody see that a month ago, a year ago, five years ago? Could we have prevented mm -hmm. that? And that's uh, that's what most companies want. And unfortunately, I, I find a lot of, of uh, paper pushers. Hey, I've got all my paperwork filled out and I'm done for the day. I'm going to leave at three. You know, it. There, there is a certain part of the job where you got to write the policies, you got to write the procedures, you got to build the training. But if you lose that face-to-face -face aspect where you actually have a relationship with those on the floor, where you have that open and honest discussion with them, you're never going to find out what's going on on the floor. Any safety manager can go audit, but if you have that that relationship built with them, you're going to get the, the great feedback you need to really build a, a, a true well-run safety program. Um, Going back a little bit, you know, I, I, I always said the past couple of years, COVID was an interesting time to be in health and safety. Um, it was very stressful to sit there and monitor. I, I know I was monitoring Johns Hopkins every single day. I was monitoring the news, trying to what best decisions can we make for our guys, which kind of goes back to that relationship. You, you need to know your clientele when you're uh, making these massive decisions that involve the health of thousands of workers or whatever. So. You've been involved in this field for quite some time. You said you've been recruiting for five years or more now. You know, you, so you've obviously seen this full spectrum of EHS. How have you seen the field of EHS evolve, you know, before COVID and now that we're post-pandemic now? Well, I think EHS is one of those tough roles that um, if someone just says, I'm an EHS manager, that's not enough. You can say, okay, well, what do you do? Because there's so, so, so many things that you could be doing. And so what I found um, during the pandemic, uh, everyone just started point, uh, looking around saying, hey, whose job is it to make sure everything's right? Um, so sales were trying to sell, uh, operations were trying to operate, nothing was was working, everyone was scared. And the fingers started getting pointed at, um, hey, I think EHS should be handling this. Um, you know, it's not safe if we all get sick. So that's your job, right? Um, so what I found was during the pandemic, um, there was a, kind of a lot of pressure put on, on e mm -hmm. EHS. There was a ton of work of, um, hey, we're all standing all right next to each other. And if we do that, we're all gonna get sick. So let's figure out how to do this without standing next to each other. Um, that was a really big task. And so I saw um, an expansion in, in EHS where maybe a plant had one person who just kind of handled everything um, to where say, we mm -hmm. need uh, more people who are evaluating and really adjusting those standard operating procedures. Um, and that changes behavioral based sa safety. It's not just uh, having good habits, but now we have to have these good habits and we can't do, do things next to each other. So there was a lot of collaboration with the operation side. Um, but I found that, it, that a lot of extra work fell on the EHS man manager, which is typically an overworked function, uh, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll probably get to this later, but uh, unfortunately, not everyone um, promotes EHS uh, to the same level. Um, most, I'd probably say half the EHS man managers that I hire are uh, the very first uh, one in the plant. And I said, well, what did you do before? I said, well, that's the plant manager's job, keep everyone safe. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. I think too many times the plant, plant manager goes, all right, guys, let's try not to get hurt out there. Let's go make some stuff. <laughs> and uh, they're not really doing anything extra. And somebody, hey, I cut my hand. Okay, go to the doctor. All right, done. I took care of it. Um, and so I'm bringing on people who are really writing these protocols, really evaluating, um, hey, what kind of gloves do we have for this role and why? Uh, and so the best of the best uh, aren't just making suggestions on how to be safe. Uh, they're making suggestions on how to be safe within the ability to continue to function as a company. The safest thing for any plant to do is shut down and everyone stay home. No one would ever get hurt. Uh, but that's just not functional. So uh, what I've really seen is that um, I think there were fingers started to be pointed. Uh, they were getting pointed at EHS. Um, that role was expanding. And in plants that didn't have EHS, they say, hey, whose job is it to keep us safe? And they go, the plant manager. And the plant manager goes, I don't know what to do. Let's hire an EHS manager. So a lot of expansion uh, in the wake of 2020. Well, you'll notice I, it drives me nuts when you see places that say safety is our number one and only priority and, you know, safety is the forefront of everything. And, and it's not. All right. You know, to be realistic, safety <laughs> is incorporated into everything you do. Your number one and your number one priority is to make money. You're a business. All right. Yeah. You know, and when you have the big posters that say safety is our number one and only priority, 
you're fooling yourself. All right. There is a risk. There's an inherent risk, no matter what industry you're in. I'm in aviation. You know, we have risk getting up on top of aircraft. Well, how do you mitigate that? Proper training, proper tools, that sort of thing. But there's still going to be that underlying danger, no matter what you're doing. Um, just to say safety is our number one and only priority. I'm sorry. Did your employees not drive to work today? That seems like a pretty dangerous thing to do. Do 80 miles an hour down the highway. So that does. It is frustrating when when you get the the leadership teams that want to do the big flashy. We're going to wrap everyone in bubble wrap and and, and get on another day. You you need to operate the business. And you're correct. During COVID, it, it was tough. You know, it's being in aviation. You can't drop a landing gear with one guy. So how are you going to do a six foot distance when you're working on a tiny landing gear? How are you going to run an aircraft with two people in the front of it? It was that was it was a daily what do we do here? And I think one of the more stressful parts of the EHS manager going through the pandemic, we had never seen this before. There wasn't one person coming through school who was alive back when scarlet fever hit and when all the other pandemics have ever occurred. This was brand new for everybody. We had we had no idea what to do. So um, you hit on some good points that it's great to have that manager that is on the floor, proactive, has a passion for safety, and he's right there with the people. You know, have you seen companies where they are trying to, you know, third party or vendor out to another safety rep versus bring somebody in? house and they're trying to weigh the pros and cons you know um how have you seen companies try to get by without a safety manager versus you know possibly going through a third-party vendor yeah. what are you seeing in instances like that well i think you hit on a, a really good point that everybody that says safety is number one is full of it safety is number one as long as they can yeah. afford it um and so i am seeing uh an increase in the desire to go external on ehs uh, it all comes down to the almighty dollar um, and when they're looking at paying somebody full time that uh, may not be all that good and they can uh, get a much cheaper option though they might go for that uh, but again that's a boardroom decision if somebody's saying hey i'll get someone to write out what we need to do and then we're done um, usually that's a mistake. We, we really do need somebody full time. And I will um, talk to those same people a couple years later. And they said, well, we're still having injuries even after that uh, consultant group came in. We really want an EHS manager. But whenever I'm recruiting EHS, um, since I do know that uh, the dollar really talks, I, I say, uh, hey, uh, how much did you spend on, you know, on workman's comp injuries last year? And oh, it was a million dollars. I'm like, Okay, let's spend less than a million dollars and let's find an EHS manager. This is a, a this is a no brainer. Injuries are expensive. Uh, EHS managers are much cheaper. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't pitched a million dollars in a in a review in a little while, so. But you know, I, maybe you I, start. I see. <laughs> uh, Lord knows I'm not worth that much yet. But, um, you know, I, I, I've seen a lot of companies where they, they buy the off the shelf EHS programs and they're just so they're not tailored to the company. They just seem like they're very written with a lot of fluff in them. And it's not, you know, tied to that organization at all. And then on the other side of it, if you don't have an actual EHS manager, you don't have someone who feels tied to the program, almost responsible for the program to succeed. And then as we mentioned earlier, they're not on the floor working with those guys hand in hand, knowing what's going on in the organization. My policy, whenever I write an SOP, I always write it to obviously the letter of the law first, but then I give it to the guys that's actually going to impact and go, hey, how's this fall protection SOP work for you guys? How's our power industrial truck SOP work? Is, is this going to work for you out on the floor? Do we need to tweak it a little bit? Because it needs to be almost intimate with the people abiding by it. So um, now with... With the growing field of safety, obviously, you've mentioned a few times already that we're getting a lot of new people in that uh, might not have a passion for it or, you know, might be doing it as a last resort. What advice do you have for anybody who's looking to get into the EHS field who's never been in it before? And how would they possibly have a successful career in EHS? Yeah, I would say if you're new to EHS, um, go to school. Uh, there are EHS folks out there um, who didn't go to school for it. They kind of tripped into it. They were in operations. They needed somebody focused on safety. They were the safety officer. Who knows what? Mm -hmm. um, and those people, uh, you know, are hard to place. To be honest, they don't quite have the expertise. So obviously, step one, uh, get a good degree, um, and then I would suggest going somewhere that has an established safety program. Um, so I do have newer candidates who uh, want to take over, um, you know, a plant. Hey, I'm going to write everything. It's like. 
learn the ropes first. So um, there are some mm -hmm. really, really solid safety programs out there. If you're working for somebody great, stay there a couple of years. Um, doesn't matter if you feel that you're, you're underpaid, learn from the best, um, learn how to do things. And then um, I'm finding that with the expansion of EHS, that um, EHS folks are becoming more specialized. Um, so uh, a company might say, hey, we have an ergonomic specialist and they're focused on just that. We have a machine guarding specialist and they're focused on that. We have an EHS compliance guy and that's all he does. Um, so I think that if there's a certain aspect of it that you really like, um, in a larger company, you can really drill into that. If you're mm -hmm. with a smaller co company, it's all on you. You got to do everything. You might have to be doing, um, you know, environmental, and, and you may not care about that. But um, I do have people I always ask and said, all right, EHS, which letter is your favorite? Uh, and people always say, well, what do you mean? I said, nobody likes all three. Um, and so you, you have people that say, hey, I really love the safety part. I don't care about uh, the environmental or you have people say all I want to do all day every day is environmental leaving me alone about the best. So if there is a certain aspect of it, um, get in with a larger company uh, and find somebody who's really, really good at that aspect. I think it is important that you learn about the others. You have the ability because you're, um, you're, you're never going to be able to rise to the top if you can only do one. But if there's one you like, be awesome at it and do it. Mm hmm. Well, then you get the old dogs like me that, you know, we have all three letters and we have to work them every single day. I would love to have an ergonomic specialist. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody has all this, three this... letters. Just that not everyone likes doing all three letters. So it was, I got to do all three of these, but yeah. I'm going to focus on safety. No, nobody likes environmental. That's air quality permits and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. And that's just, that gets into the, into the gray area way too quick. All right. right so Dan, we know thank you so, so much your for your two favorite letters. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I like health and safety. I can deal with OSHA. I can go to bat with them. No problem. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the E part, man, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, Dan, thank you so much for all the information you presented today. Um, I, I really think that give, it's going to give people a lot of great insight on this field and how to enter into this field, what to look for when you're in here as well. Um, if you are a manufacturer <laughs> uh, in need of EHS, GRN Hudson, uh, Hudson, Ohio, uh, I can help. Uh, you guys are doing some amazing work bringing people into this field, and I think more people need to know about it. Uh, like you said, prior to them getting into a plant where it's being managed by other people, this is a very specialized uh, field going forward. I think more people need to know about it. So thank you so much for all the information. Awesome. Have a great day. Thanks, man. Take care.